Often, I guess, and, and I'd be a parent who was guilty of this, you send your, your kids off to school and you kind of trust in the state education system not to mess them up too badly, not to play with their minds, that they'll get reading, writing and arithmetic um, and they probably won't die from misadventure at school or some horrible accident. Um, I'm not sure if I was sending my kid to school these days in the state system that I would be as sanguine, as relaxed about what is happening, particularly after I read a really interesting article about what our kids in state schools have been taught about gender and sexual identity. Uh, this piece um, published under the auspices of Stand Up For Women, and I hope to have it up on the platform uh, today, um, was written by Laura Lopez uh, with the support of other people at Stand Up For Women, including uh, Suzanne Levy. And rather than me telling you what's in it, I thought the best thing we could do would be get to get Laura uh, on, and, and Susan's with it, Suzanne's with it, because English is a second language for Laura. Gee, she writes well, I can tell you that. Um, but they both join us now. So good morning to you, Laura, and good morning to you, Suzanne. Good morning, good morning John. John. Okay, look, I just found this article really interesting. If not, and particularly if I had school-age kids, I would find it deeply, deeply disturbing, Laura. Firstly, an mm -hmm. overview, uh, Laura. When you set out to research and do this article, what were you interested in looking at? Um, so I started um, learning about gender identity um, when I came across Speak Up for Women um, in 2020 during, during the lockdown. Mm. And I have a background in psychology, so I got interested in what the concerns that they were raising us. I thought this made sense to me, that um, if you teach children that they can change the bodies just by claiming a gender identity, yeah. uh, they will have an impact on the mental health. Yeah. And so, you know, you ha I have two little children, um, and my oldest was about to start um, getting these lessons uh, for their relationship. Yeah. At what age? At what age? At what age was that? What age are kids been? So that would be ten years old. Ten. Ten. Yeah, so okay. Ten. At ten, they start. They used to start at school with these lessons. So I heard of that, and having been, um, you know, aware of what was happening in other countries. I went to the school and said, can I please see the curriculum and can I see the resources? Mm. And, you know, I was a bit shocked to see that the New Zealand curriculum had gender identity teaching um, in, in it. Mm. And um, especially the, the one that was launched in 2020. Mm. So from there I started digging in and I thought, you know, like parents don't know, this is a very confusing subject. So I decided to start writing about this topic mm -hmm. in my last article, because I've written a previous one. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to go down on the resources and explain what the message was that um, the Ministry of Health is push, trying to push through in this curriculum. Okay. Laura, what to your mind is the most disturbing thing about that curriculum that you found? I think there's a couple of things, Sean. One is that it teaches unscientific ideas to children, such as you can um, choose your your gender or your, change your body if you adopt a gender identity. Mm -hmm. That is not something that happens. You can, you know, identify it any way you want, but yeah. your body is still male or female. Yeah. And the other one... Um, the other one that I found quite concerning is that in, the curriculum encourages schools to socially transition children without the parental knowledge. Knowing. Now, at what age are they saying that that's a good idea in the curriculum? So this curriculum, this curriculum is to be implemented from year one, that is from uh, children with, who are six years old. And the way they introduce the concepts of gender identity is, at that age is through picture books. Now, not all the schools are using this particular curriculum, and my children's school is not, not yet. But I think peers, you know, they, they need to be aware of this. Yeah. 
Uh, look, look in terms of ridiculousness, I also understand that this curriculum says that men can menstruate. Well, that will depend on the resources. Not all the resources and not all the lesson plans include gender identity. Yeah. So that's, you know, down to the board of trustees and the principal to okay. decide how they're going to teach okay. um, this curriculum. But the parents can have a say because at the end of the day, the curriculum says you need to teach inclusion and you need to challenge sex stereotypes but how you do it is up to the school and the school needs to um, embrace what the community wants so if a parent can go to the school and say i don't want to my children to be taught gender identity you need to find another way to teach how to challenge sex stereotypes mm -hmm then the school needs to do that. And that is a good thing for parents. Okay, so but you're saying is there is, concern. if you like, a fail-safe mechanism for any parent at any school can go and say, I don't like this, and the school has to respond or stop doing it. Yes, I think so. I think, I think the message from the ministry, they're trying to confuse parents to say, you don't have any power here, but we do. Mm -hmm. You can go and say, I want you to keep teaching my children to be accepting and inclusive without teaching gender ideology because the thing is that these are these <clears throat> set of ideas push um, or teach children to not trust their parents i think that is one of the main concerns yeah. that i have they say oh parents don't understand how things have changed but that is not true parents have you know, at heart, we all want to be for our children. Yeah. So we know our children. Laura, were you um, concerned enough by, about what was happening at your child's school to approach the school, or do you think they have, in fact, interpreted this curriculum, not abused or misused it? I started talking to my children at school a year ago, like two terms before my daughter uh, was mm. due to start the, the lessons. And I, my concern was, look, this curriculum has a few things that are, I don't want my child to be taught mm. because it would generate, it would create confusion in my child's mind. And I think that that will impact the mental health of most children. When you tell a child, your body can be changed or your body is wrong. It's a very powerful mm. message that will create, um, will destabilize. Mm. How do you say that? So you are currently, Laura, time. you are currently happy with the way your kids have been taught about sex and gender identity at school? I am happy that the school has been very open and respectful of my views and yeah. they have... Um, not implemented this curriculum yet, but mm. they are starting a consultation process. Mm. So I am, you know, on top of it, and I have met with the principal about six times and the board of trustees to say, look, things are changing. There's more research coming out saying this is not um, not something that is helpful for children, yeah. especially. And for Laura, at the end of the day, is that the role of a school? The role of the school is to provide a safe environment for the children, Sean. Well, to when, teach them too, I would think. Teach them something. It's an yes, education and system. to teach them something, yes, it is the role. But it is not the role of the school to teach children not to trust their parents. It is not their role that. But there's a lot of confusion on what is best yeah. for the children. A lot of lobbying from you know, different groups that are trying to impose this, these ideas in the schools, and that becomes quite um, quite challenging for peers mm. because we don't were you know treated with what respect, the know. or were you did you face resistance from wanting to get involved here? And, and I just commend you for caring about your kids enough to get involved, Laura. But Look, we, did you I face resistance from teachers and, and from staff? I can say I haven't. I have gone with, um, you know, goodwill to the school. I believe that most people, like myself a couple of years ago, don't know what this is about. Most people would think 
teaching gender ideology is about teaching compassion and acceptance, but it is not. It's about teaching rigid stereotypes and telling children that if they don't conform to regressive ideas of what is to be a boy or a girl, then they need to be trans. And that's quite, um, to me, it's quite alarming. There are many, so so many you're ways saying the fundamental curriculum is, is if you're confused or uncertain, you must be trans, we'll help you transition. That's what that that's what gender identity ideology. Oh is yes, teaching, and that's right? what we're it teaching our kids in schools. I want to bring you in here, yes. Suzanne, now because I think Laura has taken an, us on her personal journey, and I, as I said, I commend her as a parent for doing that and researching this. And it seems to me yes. she got lucky with a school that didn't resist her or, or counsel her and try to deplatform her. Do you agree? And to stand up for women, agree, Suzanne. With her interpretation that schools are being given in this curriculum a default policy of encouraging transgenderism. I think, I think that is true. I think, uh, to be fair, there is a wide range of resources that are available mm. to the schools to choose from. Um, but it would be very easy for that to be put through as the default position. Um, if you look, there's a website, Resist Gender Education, NZ, it's got a, a section on rainbow teaching in schools, which gives you the, the full kind of range of curriculum ideas that have been put forward by places like um, Inside Out and Family Planning, um, White Ribbon, I think, as well. There are a few mm. of them in there, and, it, and it, it's a massive range of things. And um, I guess it's, it's relatively new, so schools are still um, hopefully communicating with their communities about uh, which aspects they're going to teach and how they're going to teach them. Um, one of the concerning things is that the it's I think it's encouraged that the curriculum is taught through the through all of the learning. So rather than having um, relationship and sexuality education sessions that take up so many hours, are oh, you injected uh, into everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that well, that is one option. So um, yes. it, again, it's all it, it's none of it is is completely prescribed, but, you know, that makes it very difficult for parents to, to opt out. Because essentially mm. it's like teaching any ideology, it's like teaching a religion in school. Mm. Um, where which we shouldn't do them, in state schools. Which we, we shouldn't, shouldn't do. do yeah, no. Exactly, but when we do, we say, um, you, you know, this is when we're teaching it. Um, and you can and, go and do something know, else if you want. Yeah, yeah, you can sign a thing saying you don't want your child to, um, mm. to, to do that. Um, it makes it very difficult to do that if it's just completely through the curriculum, um, if it's not taught in separate separate sessions. Mm. And we, we wouldn't be allowed to do that with religious mm. education. Mm. So we shouldn't be allowed to do that with this either. Yeah. Suzanne, um, so it, you say it, our kids are being taught or potentially being taught because we have a curriculum that allows for it, gender identity theory and gender ideology. That, that's correct, and it's not to say that it will be taught to all children by all teachers. It absolutely won't be, mm. but it's it's open to, it's open to that. Um, so, I what's know, the solution to that problem? Because it would seem to me, Laura, God bless her, has mm -hmm. um, has has got involved a, 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 and stopped this happening to her kids. Um, isn't that doesn't that mean the system's okay? It's got checks and balances. It needs it needs well, more people like Laura. It needs lots and lots and lots of Lauras. Um, yeah. Because it, and it, it needs people to to um, to get involved um, to, and to talk to their talk to their kids as well. Because you know, even removing your children from the from the part of education where they will learn this, it, it's uh, or even homeschooling your children, mm. it's not going to take them away from this. They're going to come across people. It, it's going to be part of what they're mm. learning. And um, you know, as a parent. You, you can get in there and talk openly mm. with them about it. You can talk about the reality of sex being something that's fixed. Mm. Um, you can talk to them about the fact that actually kids aren't aren't born in the wrong body. They're born in exactly the right body for them. But sometimes, mm. you know, some children will feel uncomfortable in that yeah. body. Yeah. Um, yeah well, some of us, some, we all feel uncomfortable yeah. at some stage in our lives. Laura, I need to ask you, did you share your story, your experience with other parents at your kids' school what was their, and if you did, what was their reaction to what you were telling them and what you were finding out? Yes, I have been talking to parents um, at my children's school. They have, uh, you know, I started with my friends and I 
was saying, oh, I found this article online. What do you think about slaves? I'm a bit concerned about the messaging. Um, I've been to the school. So sharing that, I leave a lot of information with friends. I found that I'm not the only one concerned about this. The more you talk, the more parents realize um, how concerning the message is. And I think the next step is to gather with a couple of friends and, you know, um, raise all these issues with the school and say we don't want our mm. children to be taught this particular set of ideas. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, you know, um, if you appro- I think if you approach the school in a way that um, thinking that they, are, they will be open to your concerns, you have a better reach. Yeah. And you... You can share some information with the principal so they can understand what the issues are. And I think most people, most people are quite sensible yeah. and will be quite cautious. I think, yeah, the message is we need to be very, very cautious about the messages that yeah. uh, and kids, our children kids are, are to. Kids are vulnerable. Kids are easily influenced. Um, yeah. Look, mm. Sean, uh, usually... You know, lobby groups or activist groups, they say, oh, your child knows them, know who they are. Mm. But if you see a child, a three or four year old, who is distressed because you took a toy away from them, yeah. they are like, you know, you will see them <laughs> yeah. Yeah. crying, yelling, mm. throwing a tantrum. And what do parents do? We give them the words to understand what the feelings are. We say, mm. I can see you are upset. I can see you are frustrated. Mm. Okay, your child does not know what is going on. They just have all these emotions and they don't have the words to understand what is going on with the bodies, in the bodies mm. and with their feelings. So it's the parent's role is to say, okay, I'm giving you the words so that you can understand what is going on with you. Mm. Now, if you say to a child who is you know, having difficulties in life because they have autism or because they are depressed or because the parents are getting divorced and they have all these feelings. If you say to them, you know, like all these feelings are because you've been born in the wrong body, that child will do anything to mm. feel better. And, and that is the is. message yeah. that they are being exposed to. And it's a very, very dangerous message. message. yeah. It's, and look, I, I cannot, you know, and I know we're not going to be able to convey all the amazing stuff in the article you've written. I do have a request to make of you uh, both. Would it be okay if the platform republished this article so more people could read it? Would you have a problem with that, guys? Suzanne? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Uh, no, n- not a problem at all. All right. Yeah. Could I also yeah, say, I just can... want to make an observation about both of you, and particularly you, Laura. Laura, if you have explained the issues you've had and the journey you've had without in any way being angry or outraged or dumping on anyone else, and I think, the way, and I think the way you have looked at it is so refreshing in the context of a debate that it can often get very, very polarised and having people being very, very angry. And I just want to express my immense respect for you in the way that you have looked at this and have responded to my questions. And it is not, uh, dare I say, a typical way of conducting oneself in, in New Zealand and in the media in this day and age. Well, thank you for that, Sean. All right. Um, I, 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 think, I think what people... Um, need to understand is that you can't support a child in distress, you can't support a gender questioning child without putting them in a path of medical transition. Yeah, and without saying, transition. we'll talk about you that, know, here, here are the hormone blockers, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think, you know, like, uh, the message needs to go out to parents that if your child is in distress, that is very hard for the parent, but, you know, if you can stay calm and show love to your child, even when they are distressed and say, look, I am still, I still love you, even if you're questioning your gender, mm. I'm here for you, that many times is what the child needs. So in some cases, they will also need, you know, to have a bit of support from a mental health professional. Mm. But from what I've researched, you know, mm. what the parents can do is just to accept that the child can be in distress. Mm. 
and it will pass and just give that message yeah. to your child right yeah. well said um, laura yeah. well said we are out of time i thank you so much for joining us this morning thank suzanne you thank you for joining us as well we will get this article you, by, by laura we'll get this up on the platform website uh, today thank it you. is well worth a read uh, I'd love to have your texts, There's, your um, your stories, and your calls uh, about uh, your experience of uh, gender ideology uh, theory um, or identity theory being taught to your kids in, in state schools, and have you done something about it like Laura did?